Welcome to Planet of the Climates. Planet of the Climates is a community organized podcast bringing you the latest information and insight into the Klima DAO ecosystem. Klima is a blockchain protocol backed by carbon credits that gives people a chance to fight climate change as a collective and get rewarded for doing so. Klima sits at the intersection of cryptocurrency, game theory, and the carbon credit market, so there's no shortage of great stuff for us to talk about. If you're a climate or just curious about how making a long-term profit while fighting climate change is possible, you're going to love to meet and hear from today's guest, Klimadao co-founder and core team member, Archimedes. My name is Phaedrus. I'll be your host on this adventure today, and I'm joined as usual by my good friends and co-hosts, Reg and Diamond Hands Klima, as we discuss the latest Klima news, drop some occasional alpha for you and connect you with the biggest and brightest names currently exploring this space. So Reg, why don't you take a minute and tell us a little bit about why you're pumped about meeting and talking to our guest today, Archimedes. Yeah, Archie, I've heard him speak a number of times in office hours, and he's probably one of the core members I know the least about his crypto and uh, meat space background. So I'm really excited to hear about, you know, what got him into climate action and about the genesis of Klima. Definitely. Diamond Hands, what about you? Yeah, for me, it's more about learning his background. And uh, of course, you know, with our usual questions to really see what's the future of Klima. I always love to give you guys those alphas, right? And I'm going to try my very best to, you know, get some good alpha for you today. Yes, yes. Well, for myself, I think it's, again, mostly just a chance to, you know, meet and learn more about uh, Archie himself and, uh, you know, the background, the backstory of Klima and also learn a little bit about, uh, you know, what's going on under the hood, behind the scenes, within the DAO, with the core team too, as, um, yeah, we're just past our, you know, two months and coming up on three months now in operation as Klima here. So really, really excited to meet Archie and hear more from him. But yeah, I think that's, you know, enough from us. Why don't we just, uh, you know, just jump right into it here. So Archimedes is our guest on this episode of the Planet of the Climates podcast. He's not only traveled uh, 2,300 years or so to join us, but he's a brilliant mathematician and a core climate team member and co-founder, believe it or not. Well, the math checks out, but we've yet to confirm whether the Karen hair in his profile photo is real. I don't know, it seems a little suspect to me. But all joking aside, thank you so much for taking the time to join us, Archimedes. I know many of our listeners will be excited to hear from you as a Klima founder and perhaps get the scoop on what's coming up for Klima in 2022 and beyond. But before we get into that stuff, let's just back things up a little bit. Why don't we start by you telling us a little bit about who you are, your work experience, maybe crypto experience, and just how and when the whole Klima concept came to be in that timeline. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Thanks, guys, for having me. This is truly an honor. I mean, you guys have had way, way fancier guests than me, so I'm I'm super (laughs) stoked. For those of you who haven't listened to the Bankless podcast, I I talk quite a bit about the Klima history and like how we started. My my background, like I'm an engineer by trade, environmental, electrical, general engineer. I've been working in software for like 10 years now. Um... I never actually got into electrical engineering. My actual specialty, funny that you ask it, um, is solar engineering. Really? So that's what I graduated wow. with. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I know a lot about solar panels, like way too much, like how they work, efficiencies, like it's all memorized, like what the sunniest place on earth is, Wow. all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> that's totally cool. useless that's cool. when it comes to crypto. <laughs> so how I got into crypto, basically my coworker and I, when I was working uh, I guess part of my dark history is I used to work in oil and gas. We uh, <laughs> we came across Ethereum mining and we we're like, oh, this is cool. And like, we were also in charge of IT at that that company too. So we we're like, okay, we have access to servers. What are we gonna do? And we was like, okay, let's like let's start mining in the server farm you, just for fun. Were- <laughs> <laughs> and we did. Uh, like we experimented. Like we broke even on our mining rigs and whatever. And it, it was that was the beginning like that was us just like experimenting like what is this and like uh you know just just hang, hanging out and then eventually like i kind of like started thinking okay this is kind of interesting maybe i'll pick up like some freelance work here and there and just like 
learn something. You know, I was just, I was genuinely curious. I was like, okay, let's, let's see what's out there. So I, I reached out to, I was part of like a bunch of trading groups and like, just being like, Hey, does anyone have any work? And so I ended up doing a bunch of weird odd jobs for years. I worked, I developed prototypes for some of the earliest cosmos inventions, uh, like crazy uh, privacy preserving things like, you know, just, just a bunch of weird stuff in 2017, 2018 that like, all like ICO idea ready, nothing with like actual products. And like a lot of it flopped, like probably I'd say 99% of it flopped. There was like one, one project here and there that like kind of had some customers and like a little bit of traction, but they never went anywhere. And so then the years go by and like, I started working more and more on like different ideas. Um, I spent a lot of time just doing research and like most of the time, like <laughs> crypto has always been like a side seat for me like it's kind of weird like I, I work my day job doing a whole bunch of other stuff which oddly enough i ended up converting the entire office into like a crypto people like we built a whole crypto strategy and then built some really cool stuff with it um it's always been that way it's always been like i've always been just kind of tinkering and engineering and like if you look at my office uh, i wish i could show you guys i've got 3d printers in here soldering iron like true like engineer workshop like <laughs> like it's that's just how it is like it hand me anything i'll take it apart and figure out something with it I, I, you know it, it's always it's always fun um and so and so yeah so crypto's always been like that to me too it's like i've always like been like okay like my in my engineering background my dream's always been to build something environmentally cool like something but like you know not like you know oh, we're gonna save the planet kind of stuff like i mean like you know a true solution that actually like delivers some sort of serious change in in terms of of that we'll get to claim it out and how that started in a second but uh, you know tinkered with all sorts of wacky ideas and you know we over the years i kind of just you know learned a lot about the industry how things evolved i did a lot of work for all sorts of stuff i ended up running like a, a consulting firm where we wrote contracts we audited contracts um we did a bunch of other things that that basically just you know helped you know, experiment with different things. Like we worked with some, some governments on like some travel stuff, like before COVID, this was all before COVID. And yeah, it's just, and that's, you know, it's always been something that I've been tinkering with and, and figuring out. And so then, you know, this year, back in March, there's a bunch of other like climate folks, basically like the whole climate founding, Klima founding team are all the same climate folks that I know that we've been kind of all tinkering about an idea thinking about something for almost a year like just all of us sitting on meetings randomly just like hey you guys want to like hang out and like talk about stuff and we sat around for like a year like we didn't really come up with anything concrete like everyone just kind of like worked on their own thing for a little bit so did you know something about carbon markets going in or was it through the other people yeah so i was I was experimenting a lot with that kind of stuff too like um uh, just just doing there's a lot of research and, and stuff like uh, if you read a lot of vitalik's papers he talks about like public goods and like the social costs of everything and, and there's a few in there that talk about environmental costs and like how you basically you can not tokenize but like you can financially incentivize these things and and you know it's, it's one of those like few i, I think i've probably said this a zillion times on office hours it's one of the few industries that's actually enhanced by blockchain instead of like just tacked on like DeFi makes sense because like it changes the relationship of like how you deal with trading um and that's why it's like so fundamental carbon markets is the same like it's it's it requires this technology to function at a higher level than it does right like it's an it's a truly an enhancement right it's not like in 2017 where everyone was like oh let's put blockchain in a toaster right like it was this is and and once you identify like those particular sections or you know things that actually require blockchain to function uh like nft artwork for instance is like it's like a really good example it becomes immediately clear that like there is a need for this and then once you have a need then you can figure out okay like what's the technical solution and so olympus like makes as a liquidity engine makes a lot of sense for this whole market. For the listeners who maybe aren't as familiar with Olympus, could you give us kind of a high level understanding of the Olympus mechanism and, and why it's so effective? Yeah, definitely. So the Olympus mechanism fundamentally is like a liquidity engine for DeFi. Uh, it's a form of it through the use of what's called protocol owned liquidity. So, um, 
this is like a really hard thing to explain and grok if you don't understand how regular money works. And this is like the famous fabled Achilles heel of crypto. It's like you have to explain to people how real money works to understand why this is valuable. So real money, like, you know, the Fed, when they print money, they print it based on some sort of notional value. And, and you know, it used to be, let's, let's pretend we're still in the gold standard days. Like when there was gold in the bank in Fort Knox, people could then print money, right? Like that's what, in theory, what it was. Olympus is the same thing. Once there's gold or assets in the bank or the treasury, as they call it, they can print assets, which is the OM asset, OM currency, uh, which speaks to itself like in, in a very, at a high level, like if you have something of value, you basically can create a liquid currency out of it, which is why carbon markets make a lot of sense because it's, it's like essentially putting a value on planet Earth, right? Like saying like, okay, like we have been for the better part of this century um, extractive in our resource uh, consumption and basically on all the stuff that we work on. And externalizing those costs, right? Exactly. And like passing that on to basically like deferring it for time, right? Like, um, and saying like, you know, this is a later generation's problem. <laughs> it's, not, it's not, not our, like, we're not going to pay the price of that right now. So carbon markets are essentially that, right? It's, it's something of value that you can place in and then issue a currency around. So Klima basically fits that whole Olympus model. So going back to March, like coming back to like where this all started, um, we're just hanging out on Google Meets um, like we did with like our, our weekly or biweekly meeting with all the climate tech nerds that you now know as Klima core team. And I said, guys, you need to look at Olympus Tau. Like this applies to so many things and, and carbon credits is like definitely one of them. And, and they were like, oh, okay. And, and so they all kind of looked at it and then like every week after that they came back and they were like everyone had a different idea and they were like oh my god this is this could work uh like dionysus came back with like a whole bunch of stuff on like carbon markets and like the liquidity and the depth and like how much money it would take to move it and he was like if we just get like this much we could move you know the whole market etc cetera, et cetera. like he was in it oxillus had like a bunch of ideas too and like you know he was like okay like you know this could work and then eventually you could fund like other carbon projects and like directly tokenize them and like all sorts of like really cool ideas and so like it very quickly snowballed people were like okay like this has legs the question we all had was does DeFi accept <laughs> this as a new market right like the the whole i guess hard part that we didn't really know and didn't have an answer for until probably after the LBP was, is this like truly another DeFi Lego block? Is is this something that's that's going to slot in somewhere and, and people are going to make use of it? And I mean, at the time too, like context is also important. In March, this is when Beeple sold the NFT for 69 million. And that was like a huge deal. And it's it a big deal, right? Like everyone's like, oh, but then like immediately after there was all this criticism around NFTs. NFTs are bad for the environment, you know, envi you know, Ethereum is such crap and like all that stuff. And like people are becoming aware, sure, that there is a significant energy consumption to Ethereum and layer ones in general, but like no one, what I, and I still to this day, no one really has the full context of like how big or how small that is unless you actually understand energy markets, right? Like that's where I come from, right? Like I, I, I come from energy stuff and like my background is power right like solar engineering wind engineering, like all that stuff like you have to understand like how the whole grid works to understand like so like whenever i saw numbers i was like that is so small <laughs> like when yeah. i looked at mm -hmm. the power requirements for like ethereum blockchain and bitcoin i was like yeah it's okay it's not not on zero but like mm -hmm. in comparison to other things that are daily use like that's just so trivial like the u.s financial system yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, there's there's like basically or like, you know, just running a city like you YouTube know, or Google searches or. <laughs> yeah. Like, and that was the other thing, too. Like, no one criticizes streaming. And like, yes, after COVID, like everyone was streaming like through the nose, like the average video. Someone actually figured it out. There was like a paper I read that was like the average minute per youtube per netflix and they figured out like how far the servers are and all this stuff like it's a really complex footprinting thing and i was like i was actually quite impressed with like how deep the paper was but you know no one no one, no one talks about that no one bats an eye at, <laughs> at like you know you go to new york or london and, and you look at the offices downtown like they're on 24 7 like they don't you know you don't talk about any of that like you know the buildings like they're like 30 percent of emissions worldwide 
like that's all buildings commercial and residential but like no there is no like airplane carbon offsetting tax for buildings there's no like control system there's no nothing like it's just that's we just accept that there will be buildings yeah yeah <laughs> and you need them right like it's it's so it's really fascinating to me that like this is where that was so in march there was all this stuff all this hype around okay like environment like do we do something so we're like okay we're all thinking maybe there is something here maybe we can like put this together and come up with clima and you know do this thing and like there's um <laughs> like if you, we have a, a notion that we had where we like wrote down all our ideas back then <laughs> there's a there's a lot of iterations and like how we came up with different things and yeah so dionysus was telling us too that you guys weren't always on the same page or you're you know in theory you were kind of competitors in the early days right or yeah like many of us were working on projects that you could arguably consider competitors to each other and then eventually we figured out okay like it's way easier for us to work together than it is to work against each other because the space isn't big enough right like refi as a concept didn't exist in in march like it it was just the uh, it was something we knew and understood and we we're like okay but there's probably six other people on the planet who like maybe understand this and so and so that that basically led to like a whole bunch of other things okay well how do we work together right like that was like the first question we all came to was like okay because we had like done some stuff together in the past on like different things like different ideas and we were like okay how do we like formalize our business relationships with the stuff we're doing and then we all just kind of came to well it doesn't really make sense because we're all doing the same thing so why don't we just build something new and that's and that's kind of like where the whole concept evolved and we were you know thinking about it from day one it's always been like a collaborative effort like it's never been one single person saying that they like invented it or anything like we just we, like we were very much <laughs> as engineers do like as you know describing my office like you take a piece from here you take a piece from there you like you know merge this with that and like we, you eventually come up with this frankenstein of a, of a solution that is clima and, and toucan and all that stuff now that you look at and you're like okay like this is like you know things that we can work on oh that's so exciting then was was the uh the governance model was the dow model always kind of at the heart of it too or w when did that come into play yeah i mean <laughs> governance is such a tricky one i've worked in all sorts of different startups and companies and organizational structures and it's always hard having democratized governance like it's almost like there has to be a specific point in which it makes sense until that point it doesn't right and you know you could look at olympus as a fantastic model of decentralization but then like it suffers from speed right like you there's like sometimes like some hang-ups and you know communication is lost sometimes and whatever and then you look at time which is just run by one dude um, and makes all the decisions for everyone like there's like a happy medium in between there that like is you make and make choices that lead you to the route of decentralization for us. Like, you know, looking, looking at what we were doing, I think it always made sense for the DAO to be like a self-governed thing. It's just the question we always had was at what point can we hand it over? Cause like, you know, coming back to the early discussion, like if there's only like 12 people on earth who understand like, how this whole thing grocks like when can we really hand this over to someone else and it, it came surprisingly fast like i i truly look at some of the dow contributors today and i was like i'm blown away truly like people who knew nothing about carbon markets or anything about like any of this stuff are all of a sudden experts like my my golden shining example is always marcus marcus aurelius in the discord he like he came from nowhere like just out of nowhere one one day decided to be active in the discord moderating telling people answering questions and then like very quickly him and chaz like were operating the whole thing creating a mod team all this stuff and you know a few weeks ago he goes on this un talk where he talks about clima down and like how it works and i listened to it for like the whole hour i was like my god this guy is like he sounds like he invented everything like he he knows inside and out and I was blown blown me away and like the same is true of like all the contributors that are in there like i was told you know the there's like a lot of people in ops and partnerships and people working on different things i mean this is a really good example too like i was listening to the podcast like the previous one joseph palance and like a few others and it's like grade a production so like across the board a lot of people really grokked it they really understand it they 
it's it's gone from you know me thinking okay no one's really gonna get this to wow so many people understand this like, it's it's really awesome to see it's like there's a lot of pent-up demand for a solution like this to come through yeah and I do have this question, which is very interesting that I like to ask, uh, because, you know, when it comes to crypto space, it's all about, you know, being a norm, um, not, uh, you know, don't dox yourself, you know, it always has been this thing, right? No doxing, you know, be be that secret character, you know, <laughs> in, in, in the crypto space, right? So the thing that sets uh, Klima aside from other protocols is we interact with a lot of traditional space stuff, a lot of real world assets. And do you think that it will come a point in time that revealing the core team identity becomes important or the track record and the DAO speaks for itself? That's a really good question because it's something we toyed with a lot in the like founding of Klima. Like we were like, oh. we, we really struggled with this one because as we all were kind of working on stuff, like there was stuff we could probably bring that people would look at and point to and be like, oh, like, you know, this is stuff they, they actually know what they're doing. They've worked on different things. It's clear that they're not like morons when it comes to carbon markets. <laughs> and and we were kind of all like, but like we kind of, I think, took a step back and like the potential of what we're talking about here is quite large in like a, the least arrogant kind of way. Like just, you know, like if we do something and, you know, we upset people, what what price do we pay, right? And and Dionysus and Oxylos and a few other guys, like we were talking about it, and uh, Rainbow Warrior talked about it a lot. Like, you know, how do we balance this and how do we justify this? Because it, it's the other half too is like, oh, it's like this left field team, people we've never heard of, all of a sudden are building something. It doesn't really like sit well. And then we kind of talked about okay, and then exactly what you just asked, uh, Diamond Hands, which is okay, are are we going to be ever at a point where we have to reveal who we are? And I don't know is the answer to that because maybe is the answer. Like at some point, like, you know, maybe Klima becomes so powerful that world governments like demand to know who we are or like, you know, they're going to like put us all on no fly lists or something. <laughs> you can have a van outside your house, like monitoring <laughs> yeah. everyone that's like core <laughs> contributor, right. like, you know, stuff like that. Like, you know, you know, at the very end of Iron Man, Tony Stark yep. reveals, like, they're asking him a bunch of questions. They're like, are you Iron Man? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, like, the last three yeah. seconds of the movie are, I am Iron Man. And then, like, you know, the, the press conference, like, loses it. Um, <laughs> yeah. It might be, like, that kind of scenario <laughs> where people are like, are you, yeah. like, you know, are you Archimedes or are you Dionysus? You know, all this stuff. And then we'll just kind of, like, have to, like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I don't think we're there yet. I think we're still a ways out. I think it'll take this year will really be the, the make it or break it year. Like, do we, I mean, we've already had like a material impact on carbon markets and like people define carbon markets now as pre and post clima. Like if you talk to some people at carbon desk that they're like, oh, like before, like these carbon crypto people were here, like, you know, things were like all fine and dandy, but now like they're going to screw up everything. Yep. So Klima is kind of the, marks the start of sorts uh, in ReFi, right? And the thing is that, um, and because of that, we have seen a rise in Klima Fox recently. And my question is like, what are your thoughts on them and the potential of collaborating with them? So first of all, where were all these people like years ago? Is what I have a question for. <laughs> like I've been working on this for years, like climate, DeFi, something, and like, these people just seem to come out of the woodworks and they're like, Oh yeah, like we're working on this and we're working on this and we're working on that. Like, where were you years ago? So it's, it kind of like begs the question. Okay. So like what cascaded this into like a, a full blown industry, you know, obviously the, the runaway success of Klima and, and how it's still running and has done for like the real world carbon markets, I think is probably like a huge piece of that. Klima forks are, Interesting because technically they're a fork of a fork, right? Like we're an Olympus fork and they're a fork of Klima, uh, swapping it out for yet another asset, which is super encouraging because these people did not exist like a year ago, which is awesome because competition always breeds innovation. But that being said, I think there's going to be some really cool innovation that's going to come from a lot of these forks. What do you look for in a like a refi project where 
you say, you know, we could, we could partner with them. You know, they're synergistic with us. You know, what, what, what would you be looking for? Yeah. So philosophy plays a big part in this, right? Cause like this is the other half too. Like it's very easy to get lost in the whole, oh, I just want to save the environment narrative and like versus like actually building a fundamental product and something that is really cool and sophisticated. So I'll use two examples. Number number one is Moss. Like Moss is a, is a really good example for a number of reasons. Number one, Moss has been around for a while, like years, I think. I think two or three almost as an idea and both as like just generally. Only recently did they see any sort of recognition or success. But these are like true like OGs when it comes to like climate web three erc 20 tokenization stuff it's not ultra sophisticated like the toucan stuff is however it was one of the first and and first means a lot in crypto and that being said they didn't really ever have any feedback and i think that's that was like the the one thing that they always lacked is like no one really like you know gave them shit for like how they do things and after klima launched all the stuff that I originally thought about Moss, all of a sudden had answers to. Like, where are the audit reports? Where is this? Where is that? Where is, like, how can I find if these have been burnt? How can I find if these have been audited? How can I find this? Like, all of a sudden those had answers, which basically says to me that people demanded like a higher standard as a result of, of what happened. And so they, and then they answered to it perfectly. Like, you know, their, their RF, RFC that they put up and like all the stuff that like they answered all the questions, the AMA, like, they went from being these guys with an idea and like kind of doing things to like answering all the community questions they could possibly think of. And it's done wonders for them, right? Like they, they, they're super excited about what they have and what they're doing. And, you know, it's, it's great for us because we get to diversify the protocol, but also like it shows that like we can not pay homage to the, the OG crypto climate stuff, but like, recognize that that kind of stuff can improve with time. The other example I would use is Bitmos, right? With, with Joseph Plants, your, your previous guest, like philosophically, like if you look at how they've aligned themselves, like, yes, it's about, you know, environmental assets and yes, but like, but fundamentally at the end of the day, you look at like how they've set up their whole thing and what they talk about. And if you watch a lot of his videos and talks, COP26 and all that stuff, it's all very similar kind of philosophy to what we're doing. Like this stuff needs huge verification it needs to be like traded and it needs to be done so in such a transparent open way like blockchain provides and that's like another great partner and so anyone that like kind of fits that model would be fantastic for clean it up because like it's it's super easy right to align on okay let's like do something for the environment but then like also figure out okay how do we also deliver value right like and, and create for diff- not just value for us as like you know, the climate community, but for them as well, like, and then also for whatever thing that they're doing, right? There's a, there's a good program. You should follow it. It's called Gitcoin. Gitcoin has this thing called kernel and it's, uh, it's like they have like cohorts every few months. Some of the top web three devs, people who come from different projects, like get together and they like jam on stuff and they like do a bunch of different things. And I think Toucan came out of there even. And in there, they talk about one specific thing that is, is really important to the whole Web3 space. It's called win-win-win scenarios, where basically you have an outcome that benefits all participants. And once you have that, it's very clear as to why this is. The second you have a win-win-lose scenario where there's one participant in the ecosystem who like basically fails or is taken advantage of or simply just you know has a cost associated with their participation, it doesn't result in something good. And so in Klima's position, like that's how I view all the stuff that's coming out. Is it, is it this a win-win-win scenario? Is there like an outcome that benefits us, the person that we're working with, and then whatever they're doing? And then that's like a really easy way to measure if something is good or bad. You know, in, in the case of Moss, for instance, like we win because we diversify. Moss wins because they get into the Klima community and the Moss participants and people who are like boots on the ground from the like Moss forestry projects get more funding right like it's it's like this whole ecosystem there's no like real loser there yeah and i think as we're recording this the moss kip i believe that's just past snapshot now and we do have a fresh proposal that's hit the forum to integrate flow carbon perhaps as well too so could you just maybe dwell a little bit more on you know what 
this diversification means for the protocol and uh, you know what could be next around the corner yes so it is passed and so like moss bonds will be going ahead which means i'll have to deploy them shortly after this um <laughs> but no it's 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 good for so many reasons right like this is something we always talked about like at the if we go back to march like you know we always viewed whatever carbon ton um token that we ended up coming up with was just like one of many right like the first one we would create obviously because we have no choice like we have to like incentivize it somehow and create this whole system but after that we always envisioned it that there would be others people who would come up with their own systems or they would tokenize something else or they would you know create some sort of new way of environmental something and then we would tokenize it and then buy it and then the klima would become this like environmental hub almost of, of everything that's coming through the refi space and moss is the first right like it's it's is the first of many is to come and like they were here first and like they've been around forever but like now we have this win-win-win scenario with them where like we can offer like a, a yield generating asset on their otherwise single use asset and it's, it's fascinating because like it's people are so excited about it. like i don't know if you guys were on the last office hours i think it was like before the holidays or some or maybe it was last week the week before i think it was i think it was before the end of the new year there was a guy who came on and he talked about how he was a moss investor and he bought it on coinbase and he came to clean it because he heard about it somehow and he had no idea how to use sushi swap and he was like this is so cool. I, I thought this was like, and like he, he had all these questions about like how this could work and all that stuff. And, you know, that was just like the tip of the iceberg. But what was super key to me was this guy took the time to like learn about another community that was coming with it. And it was, it was so cool to see. So Moss is the first of many, like, you know, Toucan was the first and they're going to be putting out their own token, the second version, which is the higher quality forestry nature based one nbct moss is essentially like an early version of nbct flow carbon the one if you read the proposal like they're doing very similar things like you know higher quality stuff so it's all going to command different values and different premiums and it's all going to come into the treasury and it's all going to be super cool stuff it's the first of many right and like carbon is i think the first market that could be tackled for this because we actually have a way to price it but like in the future if we come up with other environmental assets, like biodiversity credits is like a field of academic study that no one, absolutely no one can put a price on. It's, it's so hard to be like, okay, like if we preserve this one acre of land. It's, you know, saves five orangutans. How much does that cost? E ecosystem like, services, right? That's uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's super hard. Right. But like, it's kind of sometimes baked into carbon tons and especially VCUs. So like VCUs sometimes get extra certifications. They basically like, prove or somehow monitor something that has happened you know whether it's like a water improvement or you know biodiversity improvement but there's really no way to price that because like it's 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 just such a hard thing to quantify like how much is an orangutan worth like it's there's no dollar value so carbon is the first but like the next kind of like phase of innovation that's going to come with refi and i have no doubt that, that we'll see it is someone who puts a price effectively on some sort of ecosystem. And once you have that, like through an Oracle or whatever, then you can like start pricing other things that are, that are also equally as important, like, you know, water quality or air quality or soil quality or whatever you end up like actually looking at. You have a lot of really, really cool things that come with it. So I'm waiting to see what comes out of it. And that's what's like really fascinating about the refi space that's just, you know, kind of emerged. There was one that was talking about like ocean plastic and like all that stuff. Like Vera has a standard for ocean plastic removal. No one knows how to price it. And like blue carbon, like with coral reef restoration and all that kind of stuff, like it's all there. It exists. There's methodologies for measuring like impacts and stuff like that, but no one knows how to price it. I've had like ludicrous price discovery on the blockchain. Exactly. Right. Like that's like the best place to put a lot of the discovery. Obviously we're all biased here, but like, it truly is in terms of like yeah. <laughs> transparency and, and, and but, just, just but, generally you know, but, speed. But I mean, just to, just to spell it out though, too, I mean, like all these potential innovations around the corner you're talking about, like Klima does not need to be exclusively carbon, right? Or Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, the way we've kind of started framing it in, in the whole 
ops slash partnerships and like all the stuff is like Klima is this, this climate asset. It started as carbon, but like it has this, this like potential to do so much more because it has this like whole mm. ecosystem behind it. You know, Olympus focuses on all the DeFi money stuff and we focus entirely on the carbon stuff or like the, the eco stuff. And that's, and that's like, that's truly what is going to be really cool this year. Cause like, you know, carbon is, you know, flow carbon, for instance, is pr- proposing a bridge that will take gold standard American carbon registry and Vera basically covering the entire carbon market. That's involuntary. Meaning that we have voluntary completely covered. The, the next one after that will be someone who figures out a way to tokenize compliance. Or, I mean, it most technically are that, but like, you know, EU ETS, for instance, like if you want to somehow figure out a way for us to get in there, I mean, we're not because we're not a European union country, but um, you know, like, you know, stuff like that. Like if there is that, that is going to be where it's going to be really interesting. And all of this stuff, all of it can go into the, the Klima ecosystem. And I think that's what we all envision is, is this like super huge entity that basically becomes this force to be reckoned with when you have to, when you talk about environment, like, you know, the UN meets with, you know, the G8, but then it's going to be G8 plus one. And there's always going to be like Klima Dow people there. So we've talked about, you know, Vera, Gold, Bitmos. These are different types of standards that uh, verify carbon credits. Why is it important to be partnering with different, sta- or at least accepting credits from different standards? How does that help uh, Klima investors? Yeah. Diversification is always like really important, especially when it comes to any sort of basket of assets. And so Klima itself, like to become a more resilient protocol requires this very much like how Olympus, like they started just with die bonds, right? And then they moved on to Frax. There is definitely something to be said about, about how that strategy played out for them. Like it looks like it's it's you know they own most of the frax supply i believe at some point ust i think they owned all of it at at some other ridiculous time so we're in the same spot like we we want to build something that's sustainable long term and like financially very attractive and, and creates like something that is you know truly valuable and so diversification is always like the goal and and decentralization of risk too is like also a thing like Tokens are great and all, but like, you know, we, what if one day, you know, they go down or Vera closes them or whatever, like we need something else to look at as well. So there's always that whole piece of it. And that's, and basically just always, you know, the number one thing about these types of protocols is creating value and generating values. Always what it's about. It's never about like draining and pulling value out. It's always about creating more and more and storing more and more and then creating like these ecosystems around it. And, and along those lines, you know, Klima itself is developing additional products to help service uh, people's climate and carbon offset needs. Klima Infinity has recently been leaked in our roadmap. Can you tell us a little bit more about Klima Infinity and what, what we're accomplishing with this service? First of all, whoever came up with Klima Infinity as a name, genius. Truly <laughs> deserves a raise. Um yeah, this is okay. So this also has important context and history in the start of Klima. We all kind of worked on various carbon offsetting systems or platforms or something at some point, unlike in our careers over the years. And they all came down to one thing is like people didn't really understand a what their footprint was and b how to do anything about it. It was always this like, okay, well, my footprint is this. What do I do about it? Klima Infinity makes this process really simple, right? All you have to do is put claim on your balance sheet. The protocol handles the rest. And you basically get to claim the offsets that are, you know, that particular amount associated with your state Klima. And, and this, you know, moves that whole narrative forward of like, okay, putting Klima on your balance sheet is akin to, you know, dealing with carbon offsets and, and you know, dealing with, you know, this type of whole market on your own. You just have to deal with one entity. It's a... Uh, <sighs> It's going to be a hard one to like sell for sure. Like people are organizations looking to offset. Like that's already a very hard thing for them. Like it's, it's already like, Oh, well, where do I get offsets from? Who do I buy them from? And like, there's a lot of like scammy middlemen and there's like a zillion retailers who will sell you an offset. That's worth a dollar for 15 and do all sorts of stuff like that. And so what it comes down to is like, like any business is, you know, who you know and how you know them. And, and that plays like a big part in whether or not you're retailing success, but also just generally like 
if you actually know how to sell, right? Like this is this is purely a a commodity that you're selling to someone. And you have to convince the person that you're selling it to that they need it. So either they've come up with their own like internal mandate on like you know social responsibility or like with their CSR statements, or they you know just generally want to do something. It's like becoming increasingly common in small businesses. Is what I've noticed. Small businesses like somehow take up this whole like oh yeah like we'll do something for the environment and like they'll just like offset or they'll buy this or they'll do that and then like you know big corporates have this hard time understanding why you would do that so then there's also there's also the other half too which is many big large organizations that deal in petrochemicals or deal in fossil fuels particularly or energy they have these mandates. They know that this exists and some of them are legally mandated in whatever jurisdiction they're operating in to do something about it. So they have to purchase offsets by law or they have to reduce their footprint or something. Whether or not they adopt Klima as like a valid form of doing so, I don't know. That might come with regulation. Like we might see like a country be like, yeah, Klima is like a valid form of carbon offset. And that would be like huge because then you, then you could be like, okay, that, that's – this is like a way to do it. And, and then companies would obviously opt for that because it's not only a loss in terms of money, but it's also a financial outcome that is positive, right? Like the staking rewards and, and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Exposure to uh, carbon assets. Yeah, exactly. And then like, you don't have to deal with the faff of like getting offsets from people. And like, I don't know if you guys ever dealt with brokers, but it's, it's like dealing with used car salesmen. <laughs> like it's just, it's just the worst. <laughs> like, there as a common nickname i get sometimes is used carbon salesman <laughs> um, it, it's it's funny it's really funny because it's true like the the analogy is exceptionally true yeah no that is it's very exciting about clima infinity and you know kind of uh taking some of the friction out of that experience i guess and making things easier we do have a series of little you know potentially more challenging questions here for you too around the corner first one up is me i'll ask a question a little bit about you know bct and burning bct i know it's definitely you know in the community been a little bit of a question of uh, like okay the bct is coming on chain uh it's in the treasury is it really gone is it really off the market forever even Treasury BCT, you know, in theory, could automatically be used to, you know, buy back Klima in that case of a uh, a bank run, um, and you know, if that hits the market again, what does that do to the market? Um, so, what are your thoughts around you know BCT burning and really locking away carbon for good? Yeah, I mean, this is something again coming from the very humble beginnings of Klima <laughs> is like we always wanted that piece in there. The, the, there's like one part of that equation that's very hard and we'll get to why but yeah it's 100 percent the objective like you want to reduce those tons like those tons that they come on chain they're effectively removed from circulation in the traditional market uh which is fantastic and then in the case of the, the like we call it the new market which is just DeFi. if you remove them there then you're, they're permanently removed right like this there is just no there's no going back like the uh, kujo is working on like a really cool single button burn and offset um sushi swap thing it's crazy like it's like 35 transactions in one button it's really cool uh, <laughs> and and it's 100 percent the goal like that's always there's only one small problem with it is it requires adoption of the off-chain world so people burn or burn or offset in industrious quantities in various energy markets but they don't do it with BCT. They do it with, you know, they go to Vera directly, they offset however many tons they have purchased, and that's the end of the story. There is no burning of BCT that they're going to do. So now the only like realistic short-term adoption is going to come from within DeFi. Though this will change with time, right? Like this is you know just a matter of perception. I mean, we're already in a phase where people I got this hilarious email a month ago where someone was telling me that they were quoted the price of carbon as the price of BCT. Like they were saying, like, we're not selling below this price, which was hilarious because (laughs) that means that like, there's like an index reference that people now use. So indirectly BCT burning is happening right off chain, right? People are using this as a metric, as an index of what this is worth. And they're selling these offsets for people to use and they're, 
carbon reporting and whatever they're doing. Um, it's going to be a time before we see it happening on chain and where that, where that's, you know, that's where that's going to, and what kind of sizable demand we see. Cause DeFi is nothing, right? Like uh, even if you, even if you offset the entire Ethereum blockchain, it's still like, it's like it's a drop in the bucket compared to one single oil and gas company, right? Like it's it's just it's nothing in terms of like the broader energy sector. Um, and once you get those people participating in this market, then then we're talking like that's that's the true like tried and true. And I think with them, it's going to be entirely about financial incentives. Many of these people purchase tonnage years in advance, right? Like. Carbon financing is typically done over many, many years. And I think Dionysus talks about this quite often. Like it's like a five, 10 year turnaround typically, or ROI. Like people are used to long timelines in BCT. So the second more and more people kind of realize that there is like this arbitrage opportunity on chain, they have liquidity, like it's slowly getting there. And I think that's where you'll start to see more and more of this, but it's as with anything, it's time. Right. And, you know, one thing I like to think about and talk to uh, new community members is the resiliency of the protocol, because like you said, time is so important for us to be successful. And the Olympus mechanism that we're built on really has a lot of resiliency mechanisms. Can you talk about that a little bit and, and kind of reassure people that even when there's bearish market conditions, uh, you know, we have what it takes to survive and even thrive during these uh, periods of time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you mean like resiliency and like how the actual protocol operates or you mean like how cool everybody is here? That that definitely. But uh, no, like, you know, when you invest in high risk assets like tech startups, um, startups of any type, there's a risk of failure, right? You're going to lose all your money. It's going to go bankrupt. Speaking from experience, personal experience. But uh, <laughs> but <rug>. um <laughs> In these protocols, there's a lot of resiliency built in that doesn't allow it necessarily to fail. Like if there's no malfeasance on the operators, uh, they're very hardy, right? You've got protocol owned liquidity. You have incentives that change depending on market conditions. What are your thoughts on that? How, how resilient is Klima? Incredibly in terms of like how it's structured simply because if you look at just Olympus and like how it's been designed and it just makes a lot of sense. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a tough one because resiliency can mean a lot of things, right? Like in the famous three, three meme, what that actually refers to is the prisoner's dilemma, right? In which case two prisoners have to like, for those of you unfamiliar and listening, like two prisoners have to have the choice to either work together or basically defect and expose the other prisoner. And then that person goes to jail and they don't. And that's the, the whole like negative three, three and three, three kind of operation. Klima has this like natural coordination mechanism. It's really weird. Uh, it's something I've never seen where people just, just by hearing about what it is and like at a very high level, they're like, Oh yeah, I could get behind that. Like without understanding pretty much anything about what's going on. They're like, Oh yeah, these guys like they're doing something for the environment. I could, I could, you know, do something with that. So it has this like natural tendency to just coordinate people for some reason combine that with like you know strong financial incentives which are coming with you know the olympus mechanics i mean it's hugely resilient and basically the, there's a lot of people in there that have invested so much time in like educating others working to like work out problems with people how do we you know educate new users and all this stuff so it's it's something that i've, I've really come to appreciate over the last few months like really watching how this has evolved it's a staggering be fascinating and see like just genuinely like a, a very wholesome experience. Like there's, there's very little, I don't say, I don't say conflict, but like, you know, people who are upset generally have their concerns answered. Like I, yes, people get banned here and there, but like it's, it's more often than not, you see someone go from being very unhappy to, Oh, okay. I understand now. Like it's, it's um that I think is, is like, super powerful and that's like that's just community like it was just you know kudos to you guys like running this podcast is it's part of that like that is the single most important thing no no engineering can solve no no fancy whizzy ui like it is the people and the people investing in people pays dividends like you wouldn't believe yeah i i agree i think the community is is so strong uh people are devoting a, 
a lot of their free time and uh, even bleeding into their meat space jobs. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, you just sense that people are highly motivated to see this uh, protocol succeed and people are thinking in terms of years, decades. So I, I'm in agreement with you there. Okay. Well, if, if I ask the, the flip side to that, then, uh, you know, talking about the resilience of the protocol, then I'm curious, you know, now that we have you here, what keeps you up at night? We, we, we've seen like a lot going on in terms of, you know, some different hearings and regulation stuff in the US, for example. What, what has you worried or what's kind of like, in your mind, the biggest threat to that resilience? Hmm. I don't know if anything really keeps me up at night in terms of like what could go wrong here. I think anything that could have gone wrong probably would have by now. Uh, <laughs> like hacks or just something bad. Um, you know, our, our launch was pretty spotty. I mean, that's, that was like, it, everything bad that could have happened, happened and we got over it and things moved on. But in terms of like regulation that's coming, I don't know. The, it's it's this is a tough one because DeFi regulation is like super not okay, right? Like the the stuff that's happening in the states, for instance, like they've got it totally backwards when it comes to how to regulate DeFi, and they really don't understand the future, and and they're painting themselves into a corner there. Like that's it's not good. The flip side, though carbon and environmental regulation could not be better like it is just getting stronger there's more and more mandates for people to do things and, and you know people are seeing very much like the action coming from their governments local municipal provincial federal state all like they they see all those are finally coming into place and you're finally starting to see okay like there is actual thinking going into how to regulate this stuff because that's the other thing too is like environmental concerns have been around for a while right since the kyoto protocol but no one's actually figured out meaningful ways for actually incentivizing people to do better like you know just, just the, you know they're just like stop polluting and that, that was that's the end of the discussion there isn't really like a okay but here's like all these like and then over the last like maybe 10 15 years we started to see finally regulation catch up to a point where it actually makes sense you know incentivizing purchase of electric vehicles or decarbonizing grids or you know inf incentivizing different energy type structures or like subsidizing your so solar on your house like all those types of things have uh, not only paid off but they've finally started to see uptake like i remember when solar panels on your roof was like a niche thing for like you know hippie bum nerds who like <laughs> like just wanted to do something but like it was just so expensive so like out of the ball like w crazy when it comes to like, actually installing and then now all of a sudden it's like well how come you don't have them on your roof right like what's what's stopping you essentially and so that's so there's like this we sit in this weird like middle ground where DeFi regulation could not be worse <laughs> and it's bad like there's there's very little like clarity there and then you look at carbon climate regulation which is getting clearer by the day like you have the cop 26 this year was a huge success simply for the reason that people actually agreed on selling it most right like international trading of carbon is a fundamental piece of this whole thing being able to actually work together at that scale is going to go miles so i don't know if it keeps me up at night or what i worry is that like you know someone's going to point and blame us for for <laughs> something like oh well you raised the price of carbon like three times in three months that's ridiculous um i don't know like there's it's, it's i i do worry about like it, well we're trying to i mean that's what we're trying <laughs> yeah, to do that's right? the goal that's the point <laughs> um it's it's uh it's it's hard i don't know where because i don't know which camp we sit in right like do we sit in the DeFi with the DeFi people and have to worry about all these DeFi regulations or are we going to be exempt because we're after the carbon markets and, and climate change. I don't know. Uh, it's um, Yeah, I think rebranding to refi is um, is a good move. Yeah, I think so. M meaning that group is uh, a good distinction. We're exempt from all the bad, bad stuff that's going to happen to DeFi. Yep. So this is the part where most of the listeners look out for. And I'm going to go straight for the queue. So we are asking for alpha right now. So, you know, is there any great alphas that's coming soon other than the ones we know, which is Moss, which is Flow? Other than this that we all know about, I really want to, you know, give some good alpha for our listeners and ourselves. Uh, what's to come? Like, like what's the, is there any alpha that you can drop for us that, uh, you know, Ooh. Brian always say, 
uh, I, I lick this and don't let Archie know. Can we do something that Archie licks it and we don't let Brian know? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna get him back for that that post in the in the Discord. Uh, he's been working on a really cool idea. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with what's happening with Andre, and he's like we're looking at the VE33 kind of idea. Have you seen that blog? I think it's like three days old. I have not. Give us a TLDR. Basically, fundamentally, gauges for uh, rebasing tokens, essentially. So like being able to have like weighted governance for, for specific things. Brian, oh, this is going to be so good. Sweet revenge. Uh, he's he's uh, He's been cooking up this similar idea. And we're kind of looking for a partner to do it. And like, you know, somebody who's going to come up with these kind of gauge type style tokens for carbon, essentially like incentivizing and choosing particular carbon assets. And then like we were also kind of like spitballing the idea that once you have that is you can create then uh, like a stable coin based on carbon assets. So you can create CUSD, right? Like the idea of, uh, you know, a money that is backed by regenerative action, which is the complete opposite of, of how capitalism, right? Which runs on extractive action. Wow. Really cool. Really fascinating. Uh, I don't know if anyone we know, I'm sure we'll find someone who's like working on something and then they will kind of propose it. But like, that's an idea he was cooking on. And I don't think it's too far away either. Cause like we're looking at like, I hate to say this, but uh, magic internet money, like that success is like a runaway success, right? Like it is, there's no doubt in, in terms of like how that has you know proliferated, but essentially that, like that idea. And then you basically move that into carbon. I think that's really cool. I think there's also uh, I don't know if I can leak this one. It's okay. We, we just take everything you leak. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone else is working on the other piece of this, right? So you have CUSD, which is like the synthetic you know, token that exists on chain. And then the other piece is somebody's working on creating like a bank essentially that allows you to store and flip USDC, USD for uh, Klima or, or whatever collateral you end up choosing. Um, and that's like going to be a full banking card and a banking system. So you can have like S Klima like in your savings and then Klima in your checking essentially. And that's going to be just like a, a standard MasterCard Visa card. Um, like, I don't know if you're familiar with like YRX or like the Binance card, something like that. I mean, I don't know how close that is because like you need like a license for that and that's going to be a while. But I know that someone like they they approached us about They're like, okay, we're going to work on this and we'll let you know when it's ready. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> Choose, man. Choose. Really, really. I, I, I literally got the choose right now. Like, just hearing all this alpha, man. Like, I ex- I just expected, like, like a really short, like, uh, 30 seconds. Oh, you're going to do this. Like, that's it. Like, but it, I didn't expect you to go all the way. Like, that's not one, but, like, two different alphas that we are looking in down the road. Yeah, there's a lot of people, man. I mean, honestly, with the way how, like, like you know, time in crypto works... It might not even be by me in a matter of months, man. Like, like that's what I always feel, right? Like, like every other day, I just feel like it's it's just a day. It felt like a week, you know, like just me working, you know, like like me contributing in the DAO and you know helping out here and there, you know, like it's really crazy in the the way how time flies in crypto world. And I mean, based on what I hear. You, what you have said, I think the only other than the le- regulatory things that you know, like licensing, that would take a while. But I think everything else would just fly off in the speed of light. I think in the next two to three months, we'll be seeing something, some form of like formation happening. And wow, really, really appreciate the the alpha drops, man. Yeah, that's really. sweet. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna ask the impossible question then. If you know Diamond Hands is just talking about how quickly things move and you know what's gonna happen in a few weeks and a few months. Uh, next question for you is to kind of cast your eyes a little bit further down the road. And our favorite question here is, what do you see in two zero tree tree? What's the vision for twenty thirty three? And what do you imagine the impact that uh, Klima will have had at that point? And where will Klima fit into the picture of uh, climate action? I think about this a lot. If you, it's coming back to the previous question, what keeps me up at night? It's this, this question. What is going to happen in the future? Because it's like it's it's very easy to piece together what's happening now, what's going to happen in the near future, but the long future is kind of always the the hard one. I don't know. Um, I don't have a good answer as to what I think is going to happen. What I want to happen is probably one thing. Like I, I would say, like 
like working with Sven on his piece was awesome because like I, I got an like artistic insight into like how activists view you know the the climate crisis as they call it and it really opened my eyes to like how how much of an impact this all really could have and so you'll never see me at like an extinction rebellion rally you'll never see me protesting ever like i've never done any of that in my life like i've never gone to like a climate change rally nothing right like for me it's always been doing actions speak louder than words right like you can yell all you want but if you don't do something you're not gonna you're not gonna get anywhere it's 2033 i hope by then in 11 years we'll have done a lot i mean 15 million tons i think we crossed a 14 like the last week it's not it's not a joke like that is a lot <laughs> like a lot like that's the average person is 12 a year in north america it's or 16 a year uh, and then in europe it's six tons so we're talking like you know millions of people <laughs> that are just you know their impact is now zero it's it's a really cool thing so by 2033 i mean that's 10 years so at least 10 times what we did in 2021 so uh, 150 million tons for sure i think that's an easily achievable goal whether or not i mean that turns into other assets i don't know i mean i think what we really want is i want clima to be a household name like you you know, very much like how you look at other climate organizations, like you, you think about environmental stuff and you think about WWF, you think about UN, you think about the World Bank, you think about all sorts of people working on different things, uh, you know, the Bill Gates Foundation and all these people who are working on, on crazy stuff. But by 2033, you'll also know that Klima is part of that. Like it's in like an unstoppable force that like you cannot... You can't like it cannot be argued with, cannot be reasoned with. These people are on a mission, and you either join them or you get out of their way. Like it's just this huge engine. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, that's honestly that's kind of where we love to end the conversations here too, with like looking down the road and w what your vision is there, and you've yeah, definitely painted a great picture. I think. Thank you so much for your time there, Archie. Thanks, guys, for having me. This is this is awesome. I, I like truly, guys. This is like hats off to you guys. This is I, I really enjoy the podcast. Wow, so what a great conversation. It was great to meet Archimedes and learn more about the man behind the dead mathematician and the Karen hair. <laughs> I don't know about you two, but I was really impressed and inspired when I just heard that story about, you know, diversifying Klima's treasury and that long-term vision that, you know, Klima is not just about carbon. There's a bigger picture that we want to inspire and be able to, you know, finance and drive climate action on climate change and um, in particular that conversation part about you know ecosystem services and diversifying into protecting ecosystems through climate as well too um, i think you know we all think about the spaces and the creatures and the places that are at risk with climate change and it's great to imagine climate having a real positive tangible impact in a positive way on those places so yeah how about you for key takeaways reg what were your thoughts on that conversation yeah, it's great. It's great hearing about Klima Infinity and hearing about how we are, you know, building out our services to attract uh, big organizations, how allowing them to um, track their footprint, track their offsets using Klima. And, um, and also, I don't know how much of this was recorded or not, but there are quite a few celebrities in, interested. So that got us pretty excited as well. Oh yeah, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> diamond hands did you get that alpha you were looking for what did you think of that conversation oh yeah for sure man for sure without doubt man like you guys know that i won't I will, i'm gonna get those alpha for you guys right and i didn't expect him to drop so much alpha it was really crazy like like i literally got the chills when he was just like sharing those alphas with us like what's the vision he has for clima and I like that this particular one thing that I really like, uh, which is this win-win-win situation where he always mm. look at how certain things we can actually create a triple win situation that no one no one loses in this 
kind of arrangement and that's how Klima is all about and that's really amazing and um, you guys would know right I am so stoked right now that I, I, I'm really lost for words like this is one of the best episodes I, I have by far yeah no doubt after that conversation with Archimedes I think definitely getting the feels going that 2022 is going to be a big year for Klima Klima is going to be ready to step onto the big stage and step into the spotlight in 2022 no doubt yeah, so for everything Klima, make sure you're hitting up klimadow.finance where you can stake bond and perhaps most importantly, find that link to the Klima Discord community. Uh, as a DAO, as a decentralized autonomous organization, Klima is community driven just like this very podcast. So join us and you'll find a great group of climates and plenty of opportunities to contribute and be as active as you'd like to be in the DAO too. We hope you really enjoyed this conversation with Archimedes. Thank you so much for joining us. We're definitely looking forward to saying hello to you once again on the very next Planet of the Climates.